Hey everyone, welcome to the channel. In this video, I'm gonna let you in on an industry secret. I'm gonna show you the exact tools professionals use to make WordPress websites that rank on Google and attract clients or drive e-commerce sales or just gain exposure on the internet. And we're going to do all of this in five easy to follow steps. So no matter what your background is, I promise if you follow me through this entire video, you can make a beautiful professional website. There's no coding involved and it's actually a lot easier than you think. So what I'm gonna show you in the next 15 minutes could easily save you five or even $10,000. And I promise that is not an exaggeration, which is basically what you'd otherwise spend to have a marketing agency do these five exact steps for you. Now, I'm sure those agencies don't want me to make this video, but I'm doing it anyway. And by the way, I should have said this before, hats off to you for taking the initiative to find this video and make a website yourself. You've already taken the big step of deciding you're going to do that. Now, with that being said, let's get started making a successful website. So step number one in this five-step process is to get hosting. We like to use Hostinger. They're very fast. They're extremely reliable, fantastic uptime, and they're actually very affordable as well. So when you combine all of that, there is really an obvious choice for us. So we're going to go to santrellmedia.com slash Hostinger, or you can click on the link in the top of the description to make sure we're all on the same page and you're getting a discount. And I'll tell you what the code is in a minute. We're gonna type in santrellmedia dot com slash hostinger hit enter and it should bring you to this page right here now we are going to click on claim deal you can see right there 299 per month plus three months for free there are three different plans here and like i said there are always some pretty big discounts instead of 12 dollars a month so you can read through all of these and see which one makes the most sense for you we're going to go with the most popular one the business web hosting so I'm going to add that to the cart and we're getting three months for free and then $3.99 per month. But I'll, I'll tell you, like I said, a code on how to save even more than that. Now choosing the period, I usually, if I'm confident the website is going to be successful, I go for the maximum duration of 48 months because no matter which one you choose, at the end of that, it'll renew at a higher price. So it's going to renew at $16 per month. But for now, I really wanna lock in that $4 per month. And I can lock that in for up to four years. So it's kind of a no brainer for me. That's what I'm going to go with. Now we have to create our account. And before you type in your credit card information, you can click on have a coupon code and type in Santrell, type in Santrell and apply that and you'll get an additional 10% off. So now that gives us four years of hosting for a total of $172. And because WordPress is actually free, this is basically your only expense besides your domain, but this gives you a free year of a domain as well. And then after that, it's maybe 15 or $20 per year. And then of course, add a password for Hostinger. Then be sure to go and verify your email. And now I like to claim the free domain that came with that. So we click on claim domain and we can call this santrellmerchshop.com. See if that's available, .com. I'm gonna claim that domain. And of course, when you claim a domain, you have to add some basic information. So we're gonna add that right now and then click finish registration. Now we can click on continue. Then we have to go to our email and verify the domain. And now if we click on hosting on the top, we can click on set up business web hosting It'll bring you to this right here. We're gonna say start now. We are creating this. We can say skip, I don't want personalization. And we can say create a new website. Then select WordPress, because we're building a WordPress website. And of course we have to create a WordPress login. Now you can make this different from your hosting or login. I recommend making it different. This is going to be how you access your website pretty much every time from the future. You're not really gonna to go to the hosting or dashboard pretty much ever again. And then keep on clicking skip. You don't need a template, you don't need plugins. We're gonna add all of that later. And then for choose domain, we're going to use the one that we already claimed. So we're gonna say select, and we're gonna click on finish setup. And finally, we can click on edit website. And that brings us into our WordPress dashboard. Now I wanna point out in the future when you want to access this, what you wanna do is type in your domain. So santrellmerchshop.com, that's my domain. Whatever yours is, you would type that in slash WP dash admin. That'll bring you to a login screen where you type in your username and password and it'll bring you to this once you sign in. Now, the, that's step one, right? We have our hosting, WordPress is set up. The second thing we wanna do is get a template and a theme. So we're gonna start off with the theme. If you go on down to appearance on the left side, we can click on themes. Now out of all the different themes, we're gonna click on add new. Now you can scroll through here and browse many, many different themes. They all have slight differences, but we like to go with Astra. So you're gonna install Astra. And then of course you're going to activate Astra and that'll bring you to this page here. Now, once we have Astra installed, the next thing we wanna do, you should have a pop-up right here. So now we're gonna click on get started and it'll say get started with Astra templates. So we're gonna say get started. We're gonna click on Elementor. 
And from here, we have a lot of different options. Now, Elementor, in case you're wondering, is the drag and drop editor. Rather than using the default on WordPress or rather than any of the other options, we find that Elementor is not only one of the most popular, but also a very, very intuitive one for beginners that scales through experts as well. So you can really grow with this with this uh, software here. And so it's just scrolling through these. You can find one that matches uh, whatever kind of website you're trying to make. And keep in mind, some of them are free and some of them do require a premium plan. So if you wanna to upgrade to Elementor Premium, you do have those options as well. But let's go through and find, uh, I'm just gonna find a free one for the purposes of this video. So I like this one right here. I'm gonna click on this one. You can add a logo if you want. I'm gonna skip and continue. We can choose our colors. You can also customize that if you wanted uh, some other colors, your own font, something like that. I'm gonna go with kind of a blue, a blue theme here and I'm going to continue. And then one last step, we do want to import the settings, the widgets, uh, the content, and congratulations, we now have a template set up and our website is ready to go. We can view our website. All right, so there we go. This is our website, sort of, like it's our website, but it has obviously someone else's content on here. So we're gonna swap all of that out, but essentially that is step number two. Moving on to step number three, we actually want to edit the website, change out this content and make it our own. And we're gonna edit it, of course, with Elementor. So from right here, you can click on edit with Elementor or I'm gonna show you another way to do that. If we go back to the WordPress dashboard, if you ever wanna edit any website page uh, on here, you can go to pages on the left. You'll see all the pages that were imported. You might not need all of these and if you wanna get rid of them, you could select them and of course go to bulk actions and move to bin, that'll delete them. Or let's say we're actually going to edit the home page. We can hover over it and this pops up, click edit with Elementor and that'll bring you into the editor. Now the editor here is very straightforward. I really like using Elementor, it's drag and drop, and you have all these elements on the left side, and then you have your website on the right side. Now Elementor uses what's called a section layout. So on this website, you can see this little thing on the top outlines everything that has this kind of earth image in the background. That's the first section. Everything with the white background down here is our second section. And then this is a third section. And then we have our footer on the bottom. So if we want to edit, say this section, we click on the six dots on the top and we have our editor on the left. So we can change the width of the content. We can do all types of things like that. We can change the style. We can change the image. That's probably the first thing you wanna do is change out the images. So you have a general idea of what your website will look like. And so if we just click on choose image, we can upload our own images here. And maybe that looks good enough. But if it doesn't, on the left side, you can also choose the position of it. You can choose uh, the size of it and do all different types of things like that. We can also have an overlay to make the text pop even more. So if we click on overlay, maybe we just want a color. We can just have kind of a gray. So maybe we want like a, a whitish overlay like that. And we can choose the opacity. Again, so you can still see the image in the background, but now the font on the front is way more readable. Now, if you wanna change the text, you can double click on that and we can change it to uh, check out out our collections or whatever you want the text to be. And of course, if you wanna edit the text, once again, once you're in the text editor or you're gonna click on the pencil on the right, the editors will show up on the left side. So you can change what it actually says there. We can add a link to that. We can change the size of it. Or if you go over to style, you can change the color of that text. You can change the font if you wanted to. I recommend not changing the font. You wanna have the same fonts throughout your whole website to keep it consistent and for SEO purposes as well. But you can see right here, changing the color is totally fine and it might make it look a lot better. So that's basically how you'd edit a section and text. We also have, of course, buttons are super important. Once again, if you just click on the pencil icon next to the button when you hover over it, you'll see that we can add a link right here. And one other thing, not just adding a link to another website, you can add a link to a different part in your own website. So if I scroll down or if I scroll up, let's say we wanted to scroll from this button, we wanna scroll down to like right here. So what we would do is click on the little nine dot array and we can type in anchor. So we're gonna search for an anchor, a menu anchor, and then just click and drag that over here and we'll drop that. Let's just say we want it to go maybe right here, right above check our collection. So it's gonna scroll down to that spot. Now we're gonna name this anchor. We're gonna call this collection. And now this button, if we click on explore, we can link it to uh, the little number sign hash and then the name of that anchor. So I apologize if this is kind of like a little bit jumpy right here. There's a lot to talk about with Elementor, but I think for the most part, if you just start playing around with it, a lot of the elements have the same general layout. You click on them, the editor's on the left side, and it's really pretty intuitive. Just more experience will make this make more sense to you. But one thing that you always wanna remember, actually two things. The first one, the most important one, 
is to always click update. Keep updating and saving your website just in case you lose power, your laptop dies, or whatever happens, you don't wanna lose your work, always click update. The second thing is you can preview the changes at any time. So even though it looks good here, we wanna test that button. If you click on the little eye logo right there, it'll preview changes in a new tab. And you can see this is now our website. If I click on explore, it scrolls down just like we wanted it to. And I think that button works perfectly. Now, if we close out of the preview, there's another thing that you really wanna keep in mind here. So I know I said there were two, definitely three important things here. The third one is the responsive modes. Even though we are building this on a desktop, most users might be on mobile. It's very likely that 50, 55% of your users, depending on what type of website you're making, could be visiting this on their phone. So if you click on responsive mode, we can go and check this out on, our, on a mobile version. And if you don't like something on mobile, you could edit it here, or you can hide entire elements or sections. So if I don't like this, let's just say this image right here, I don't want that image on mobile because it's, you have to scroll too far to get to the text. What you would do is click on the pencil icon and out of the three tabs, go over to advanced. Scroll down to responsive and scroll down to responsive and toggle hide on mobile portraits. So we're gonna click on update. And now when somebody visits this on mobile, that will not exist there at all. Sometimes you have multiple columns in a section. So if we wanna have a new section above here with four columns, we can click on plus and we can select four columns. Now within that, if you hover over the dotted lines, you can reposition how wide each column is. And within each one, again, we can click and drag elements in. So from the little nine dot array, we can add text into this one uh, and that'll add a, a title right there. We can add an image into this one and this looks bad because I need to format it obviously. But once you're satisfied with this, maybe you wanna have all of them look the same. This is just an idea, you don't have to do this, but on the top left, the little book icon there, if you right click on that, you can say duplicate. Now that adds another section in here, but as you do that, you can go to the other ones and if you have too many sections, you can right click and delete. So this is what I like to do. I like to have them uh, kind of set up like this and then when I like it, I'll duplicate it and I'll delete the other blank ones just so I can build it, build one with the right spacing and then duplicate it four times. So again, click on update and then on top left, click on the little hamburger icon and exit to the WordPress dashboard. So if we go down to settings, we can go to permalink settings and choose post name. It's good for SEO, it's good for memorability, and of course it's easier to manage and, and copy the link and share it, then scroll down and save changes. But other than that, you wanna go to general settings and change your website title. So this is not going to be santrellmerchshop.com, this is going to be Santrell Merch Shop. That's going to show up on the top on your browser tab for anybody who visits your website, and you wanna make sure it looks a lot more professional. We also have a tagline. We don't want it to say just another WordPress website. We can say the premium and you can choose your time zone as well in the time format and all these other things, but make sure you go down and save changes when you're done. And now a quick rundown of the rest of the dashboard here on the left side. As you go down, I think you're kind of picking up on these. Uh, the dashboard is where you can find your updates. Always make sure you're keeping everything up to date for security reasons, also so your website doesn't break. If you click on updates, it'll tell you when different plugins are not up to date. Below that, we have Astra. We don't really need to do much with that right now. Posts is essentially any kind of blog articles you write will show up here. So if you wanna write new blog articles, you can click on add new and you can edit them with Elementor or you can kind of create them right here if you want. It's easier to maybe copy and paste from Google Docs or, or maybe just write them in here and then edit with Elementor or maybe just never edit with Elementor. Everybody's different with preferences there. Going back below that, we've got media. You don't have to do much here. That's just where all of your images show up uh, that are used throughout your website. Pages, I already showed you this. We have comments. You can disable comments if you want, but here you're probably going to get a lot of spam comments, which there are plugins to address, and I'll mention that in a second. But going down, products, analytics, and marketing, you won't see this unless you're doing an e-commerce website. The template I used installed something called WooCommerce, which is a very popular plugin for selling anything on a WordPress website. And I have a full tutorial on how to sell things using WordPress, essentially a full WooCommerce tutorial. I'll link that down below. But then skipping past some of those things, going down to appearance, we can go to menus. Now the menus will essentially be your header on your footer. You can put these in different plates on your places on your website. But if we just go to our website, you see on the top home about services contact, that's great. But what if we wanna add something else? What if we wanna add a link to say our YouTube channel? We can go back to menus and from here, we can add a new thing to the menu. You can add pages, you can add posts, you can add custom links. That's what we're gonna do for YouTube. 
you can add categories or WooCommerce endpoints. For example, you can add like your orders or uh, you know lost password, whatever, stuff like that. I'm gonna add a custom link to YouTube and I can click on add to menu. Now, if you wanna rearrange that, you can click and drag that up and down and that'll be at different parts of essentially left to right, it's up to down here. And if you wanna have some things embedded under other ones, maybe services or maybe contact is under about us, you can simply drag it to the right and now it'll be underneath that. So when we save the menu, go back to the website, you'll see the menu will look different and instead about is now when you hover over about, you get contact below that and that'll link over to the contact us page. So then of course our final step is managing the plugins. This is where you get to the next level for power users on WordPress where you get so much more functionality. We already have a lot of plugins on here, maybe too many, but on the left side, if we go down to plugins, we can delete a bunch of ones that we don't need. So we have an anti-spam one, that's gonna be great for comments. If you want to enable comments, you might wanna keep something like this. WordPress migration, we don't need that. I'm not migrating anything, I'm gonna get rid of that. Hello Dolly, I don't need that. I do need Hostinger, definitely keep the Hostinger one. I don't need Lightspeed Cache, I don't need, well, I already had starter templates, I already used that. So I'm gonna select all of those, we're gonna go to bulk actions, we can deactivate them first, so select deactivate, and then collect bulk actions again, and we can simply delete those. So that'll clear up a lot of what we had. Now as far as plugins you do need, I highly recommend several ones out there. You should get a security one, you should get an SEO one, search engine optimization to rank on Google, Yoast SEO is an incredibly powerful one, and I have quite a few other ones, Monster Insights is really useful as well, and I'll have a link in the description to a free PDF that we have with a lot of other, like I think 15 of our favorite plugins that we use for WordPress, and we'll keep that updated uh, as you know new ones come out. So if you enjoyed this video, consider liking and subscribing. I'm Michael Bryan with Santrell Media, and I wish you the best of luck with your website.